Amigos del canal de Mil High Five, bienvenidos. Yo soy Ricardo Méndez y ahora me encuentro en Ponce Spring, California, porque estamos visitando el nuevo museo de CC. Ralph está con nosotros. Hi, welcome. Y nos va a dar el tour. Así que vénganse, acompáñenme. All okay. right. All right. Let's I'll give you the tour. Now. Okay. <laughs> So, welcome to uh, the new DCC Museum. All right. So you remember uh, the, the closet from last time? We just, yes. um, we were um, able to um, actually um, complete, as of last week, mm -hmm. we, we found all 38 players. We oh. found the last missing one, so you have a scoop on that one. Okay. Um, we haven't released a video yet, but with the, um, with the arrival of the uh, the Panasonic, that was number thirty eight that oh, uh, nice. that we uh, we were missing of the uh, and I'm not talking pre production or prototypes, but actually sold and documented players. There were thirty eight different uh, different ones, and they're all um, they're all here. Um, we added two side rows um, mm -hmm. since you were here, so that means that everything. Uh, all the tapes um, are um, are here, um, so we, we have one uh, closet that, that can storage it all, and um, um, quite a bit of display uh, room left now for uh, prototypes players that um, that we're still looking for or uh, pre-production ones. So this closet was made to, to custom uh, fit this wall. Um, and now we also have room for um, a separate car display that wasn't there when you were here last time. So this is everything that Philips and Panasonic did on, uh, on the car stereo. We, we built that, um, that custom thing. Uh, a video that we haven't done uh, is something exciting that we found last year. That is a uh, American mini disc slash DCC player from the car. Wow. Even Philips didn't know that that was built. That's a prototype of 1995 by... Uh, one. <laughs> yeah, and it's not working, but it's partly working. But um, so Bose decided, it's like, okay, we can, we can choose. We never knew that there was a device that had a mini disc and a DC player because mm -hmm. those were technically competitors, right? So, um, yeah, and we have uh, um, display cases. Um, that allowed us to, to, uh, to display the, one of the first prototypes that they send out to uh, developers across the, across the world. Um, so we have more room to, yeah. um, to display everything and, um, and, and um, uh, to, um, to play everything. Because like I said, this is what this muse museum uh, makes it unique is that everything is, is connected and, uh, and playable. Right. So, well, now for um, even the like, 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 like the tour itself of the of the players. Mm -hmm. uh, there, you have the portables. Yes. So these are all the um, uh, the portables um, uh, made um, in in two generations. This is the first uh, first generation. This is what came out immediately in '92. The Philips, the Panasonic, and the uh, and the Victor only in in, in, in Japan. Japan. Yeah. And then uh, the second generation was um, all of these above, meaning with uh, a 134, a 170, a Panasonic, a Marantz, and the last one, the 175, that had that connection cable to the PC. So um, the first generation was only players. Yes. Then they, second were recorders. Yes, the first one only could play. They were really, um, they also have horrible battery life because they, uh, the, the electronics weren't miniaturized, so mm -hmm. they used a lot of power. Okay. Um, but they had to come out with, um, with something quick because uh, you know, everybody else wanted portable. And uh, so they came out with these players. That's why you have all of them. The insides are the, are the same, but the Victor is impossible to get. We've, in, in seven years of collecting, we've only seen that, uh, seen that one time. But it, it's uh, uh, it's easy to repair because all of these mechanisms and the internals are the, are the same. And uh, yeah, as we find the architects and the developers, 
we now have a nice connection of, uh, of people, you know, the uh, Abram Hogendorn, who is the architect, Tima Kuiper, who is the, uh, the main builder of the 170. So, um, you know, uh, the uh, product manager, they all signed their pieces of equipment before donating it to, cool. the, uh, to the museum. Right. We, uh, yeah, um, that's in the, awesome. In, in the last couple of years, we, um, we've, we've gotten quite a bit of traction with um, the former Philips employees really taking this seriously and also have no problem in um, donating a lot of technical materials. So uh, that, is, uh, that is nice. And um, yeah, um, so then here you, uh, you have the last generation, that is the, 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 the fourth generation, the, the techniques. All of them are also copied in, the, in these sets. All of them have the same mechanism, fourth generation, together with the Victor, that's a fourth generation. Um, so uh, it was harder to get these complete because they, they came in quite a few models, but uh, with the arrival of the DCM-1 by, by Panasonic, it's uh, as far as we know, all 38 players um, arrived here. Uh, it, it's, it's funny because you said Panasonic, it has the same march, but we, we have to remember that Technic is part of Matsushita <laughs> and it's Panasonic as well. So. The fact that, that, <laughs> that you have 38 models, but a lot of the models have the same internals make, make, made it easier to restore because otherwise yeah. it would be impossible to, to, to find parts. So this, the, this four generation is able mm -hmm. to play um, 20, 20 bits? 18 bits. 18 bits. Mm -hmm. the, only, the only 20 bit player is the, the Victor. That's also a four generation. Um, but the, the only 20 but the regular, one. I mean, the, the, um, the portables and the first generation, the first two, three generations are, six, are only 16 bit. First two generations are um, 16 bit. The second generation portable are also 18 bit. Okay. Third generation and the 951 and the, the, the 730 um, are 18 bit. And then everything first and second uh, generation is, uh, is 16 bit. Now, it is interesting that um, back then in the 90s, I mean, there always has been this sort of part of high-end audio, mm -hmm. but it was supposed that DCC must be the, the thing that uh, will update the, the compact cassette. So, in a way, it has to be cheaper so people can get it. And um, I see now you have the boombox here. So... Uh, would you say those were meant for, you know, not the, the, the high-end collector, but the people who can have like the affordable prices thing? No, because they weren't really affordable. I mean... <laughs> that's that's, that's uh, one of the problems that you, you um, very well uh, mentioned is that people were used to cheap cassette players. People were uh, used to cassette players. So yes, okay, so we're going to get awesome quality. But why now does it have to, to, to cost five to 10 times as much? Because the, the, these were not ever cheap players. So um, that didn't help them. And the fact that in the 90s, the word compression, you're going to compress. Now everybody does it. We yeah. all know it. It's accepted. But it's uh, in the 90s, that word, they started with the word compression. The whole music industry, especially artists said, are you going to compress my music? That sounded like a negative word. Um, it's like when the electrical car came out. Every, everybody said, it's like, well, you know, I don't want to stress out. There's no driving range. It takes time to solve these, these problems. And now, 30 years later, we, we don't, the compression has gotten so good that you don't hear it. But that compression on DCC is so good that it's actually sometimes yeah. better than CD. You cannot e even hear the difference. So, but politically, everything fell apart they made a, uh, the prices were too high so a lot of people could i couldn't afford it so a lot of people couldn't afford it you yeah. have to be really an audiophile and 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 have uh, quite a bit of money to afford these so the fact that that there are still three hundred thousand players made to me is a miracle because um yeah well, they're build, they were backing up the party they were believing in it's it's yeah. it's 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 very questionable what happened to a lot of them because we um, we have now found the American developer that um, built the Optimus uh, 2000. Okay. They um, this is uh, 
the American company made, uh, uh, Optimus is made by Tandy, mm -hmm. and they wanted to do their own thing, their own boards and their own design. So they went to Philips, they um, bought the mechanism, but everything else they was... made on their own. The guy who developed this is going to visit us um, here pretty soon. Okay. And um, he said that he has documentation that 50,000 of these players were built. 50,000 uh, more. And, and, and where are they all? Because uh, I, I tell you that in the United States, not even 5% um, of those were sold. You cannot even find two or 3,000. So did they mm. secretly destroy them? Um, you know. And <laughs> they made like Atari did with the AT game, right? Yeah. Put it on the he doesn't know, but I, I'll <laughs> tell you, if 50,000 players of the Optimus would have, would have made, you would have seen him on eBay every day, new yeah. inbox, compared to 300,000 worldwide. Exactly. So, but again, this is assumption. Uh, he yeah. said he has, he has proof that 50,000 were built. Um, I mean, probably it has like a product order and maybe it was canceled mm -hmm. back along yeah. the line, probably. Yeah. Now, it, it is interesting to me that you say, I mean, Optimus is not a brand that is uh, well known worldwide, but Tandy is. Mm -hmm. And Tandy makes one of the best uh, open reel players. So I'm, I'm, I'm curious about how, how, that's, how that sounds if they manage to, to do their own magic on the... On the components. It's still it's still a 16-bit player. It, it, it if anything, it sounds and acts the, the same way. They just wanted to do their um, their own display, and they wanted really to make this look like a VCR. Yeah, it looks like a laser disc. Yeah, though. yeah, laser disc. Very, very. If anything, this looks very much 90 more than everything else. So. Yeah, and, um, th and these were made on the time that we use big, big, mm -hmm. uh, big electronics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, going back to the to the um, portables, this looks like the first CD wall, uh, CD Walkmans. Yeah. And the other ones looks like the first DAT machines, the portables. Yes. And and we forgot actually to good that you circled back to that because uh, also since last time, this is the very first portable, the 180, the very first they made. And, oh, really? And I I already get goosebumps always talking about it because. In my opinion, they should they should have stuck with that idea. Look, because it, it shows the artwork. Yeah, it's you know it's sort of like the Walkman that we knew that Sony made so so popular. Yet they had to go with the with the, with the compact disc yeah. style, right? So um, um, yeah, but that was the very first portable um, prototype they um, they developed. And uh, but it's the same, you know. In hindsight, this is the very first. DCC player they made more of a cassette deck that yeah, you and I would know with a glass door and then after they have developed this they stopped and then yet it was you know this this style that came out yeah all of it this was, mimics the, the the mechanism of the yeah. CD which CD, was a CD which was the thing the, the, the trade the, tra the tray system yeah, yeah. I mean, it was the thing back yeah. then yeah. so now just to to let my uh, uh, pe my audience yeah. knows it's not all DCC. I mean, this is an L cassette. Yes, we uh, what we um, offer here as a service to uh, to Patreons is that if you want something um, from any format to any format, we try to do everything. So whether it's reel to reel or mini disc or a track or cassette or L cassette, whatever obscure format, we'll try <laughs> to uh, to have in this closet, and so we can you know convert from any media to any media. That's awesome. Um, yeah, this is uh, so uh, passion on cassettes. That's how my life started. So we have the Dragon and the 505, two great machines. We have um, this is uh, we have well we had an EL7 when you were here, uh, yeah. which was silver. Uh, this is uh, the, the 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 Vega version of that. It's rare because it's in black. So can I see the, the cartridge of the? Yes. Because um, people. Ask me about the Elka set. I don't have a. I don't have but a look, one. But look the size of that. Yeah, I mean this and, is and like just, the, the um, open reel uh, tape. This is the yeah. tape the same length of those ones. So so, so. hold it hold it to a, a regular tape so people have a have okay. a, have a reference. Yeah. So it's uh, it's. But this is reel-to-reel -reel tape. Yeah, it is. It is. And I mean, um, so and it, it runs, it is... runs as, as higher speed. It sounds. Um, as a reel-to-reel, -reel. it sounds really well. Is this is is this on uh, tape that um, 
came out. They, they weren't. Uh, no, we. Um, just, what you we, just made that. Right? Yeah, what we did is because you can get these stickers, um, we reproduced them. Okay. And um, uh, so that we uh, are able to uh, to print our own. So we have a whole collection of um, <laughs> a whole collection of uh, of these. So it looks nice because again, if you have a glass door, you want your artwork to look um, yeah to, to look nice. So now I'm missing these that are the, the components which was big on the 90s. The, mm -hmm. the, the components that has, you know, the works. They had the, the, the normal tape, they had the CD, the everything. Yeah. So yeah, Philips this is Imedius as well. Philips and Panasonic and Technics made, made a few. This is, uh, this is one of the um, most unappreciated ones because it's a mini system. But it has everything. It has a regular cassette. It has an 18-bit third-generation oh. DCC player, CD, amplifier, radio, equalizer, and two speakers. But this was like what we call, what we call it the bookshelf uh, uh, set. Exactly. I mean, the, Very this, small. Is, this is the, the, the thing that I was referring when I talk about you don't have to be uh, uh, high-end. You could afford yeah. somewhat this was, kind uh, of... This was, uh, when this came out, this was almost close to that full set was like half of the price of the original DC right, player. Yeah. But this was like 94, 95 already. Yes. So um, these are more, uh, and this is not high end again. Yeah, the amplifier yeah. in there is not like your class A or whatever. This is a little bit more high end, although not, uh, it would be mid range. That would be the, 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 the mid size version. Um, and also another example of a mid size version. It is actually the original set that belongs to your 300. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I yeah. have my 300 like that. Yeah. And I always wonder why the, the color is so, um, you know, like... Different. Uh, that different. I mean, it's yeah. not black, it's not gray. No, but it's, it's Phillips gray. That's exactly. what the color is. Yeah. So they wanted to stand out. And in the end, um, that was not always working for them. Because if you have... Um, a person that also liked things to be visually pleasing. Like when I had uh, the Alcaset EL7, yeah. it was the only piece of silver equipment. To me, that was an eyesore. So when I could find the, the, the Alcaset in black, I would prefer that. You know, the, the Marans and the Victor uh, yeah. came, came, came in gold. Mm -hmm. So it belongs, you know. But I would prefer everything to be, to be black, yeah. you know, because it, it matched the system. Um, but that's just... The, the, the visual part of it. A yeah, lot I mean, of people don't care. They have everything mixed mix and match. Well, I, I, I do care. I, mean, I have everything in black. But back, back in the 70s, everything was silver yeah. and, 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 and big. And in the 90s, it's, it's when everything changes. But they and all Panasonic have Panasonic and Technics did MIDI, MIDI sets as well. So that's a Panasonic and that, uh, that is a Technics um, with a fourth generation um, player. player that has the same mechanism as the, as the Victor. So it's... Uh, uh, um, uh, so we wanted, of course, if it comes with the set, we also want to show the set. So we have all the, sh the sets and amplifiers hooked up to a switcher uh, so we can play it through the speakers uh, on, on this system here. So that is a switcher that will actually allow us to switch all the amplifiers of the MIDI and mini systems to mm -hmm. the same speakers. And then the switcher here switches the rest of the player to the main amplifier. So like I said, everything is, uh, is hooked up and then because we're using a switcher, we can also say, please record this from this. Also new since uh, you were here last time is... Um, the, yeah, what the, is that? The, rotary, the, the rotating player is part of the mastering equipment after okay. a tape was mastered in the studio. Oh. It, that player was used to test whether the master tape was okay. So it's a reference uh, It's a reference player, play, play, uh, player. yeah. Okay. It, it's, on, it, it's, it's the only thing it does. And the, also what we just brought from Europe is a prototype pre-production that didn't make it in 1996. That is a dual deck, DCC and analog in black. So you would yeah. be able to, but that didn't make it, but it's fully functional. Um, okay. It basically is the wider version of that mini system. All right. Player and DCC, uh, analog and digital, same thing, but then in black with, uh, with wider controls. So, um, yeah, we find quite a few, um, quite a few pieces um, that we have. And, uh, yeah, uh, talk to me about this uh, display. 
I'm yeah, the, the, um, the, the display here, this is um, a, a DTT 1000 training stool. So in the early 92, if you, let's say you would be Tandy or you would be Panasonic or you would be Samsung and you decide to build your own uh, DCC player, they would send you this. This is like a breadboard where you can implement your own software and see how it behaves. So it has all these external components and the same mechanism as we have in the prototype. And then you can test your software mm -hmm. Uh, before it goes into a player. So that's um, uh, why it's called the DCC um, training stool. You can learn everything about what's, what makes a DCC tick because this is an entire DCC player. Um, and then uh, in here, we have the, um, the very first uh, prototype. This is uh, basically the very first tape that Peter Dutzen designed, like, okay, if we're gonna make a tape unique and, and beautiful, mm -hmm. maybe it should be look like, uh, like this. And when we visited him, he still had it. He also had the cardboard uh, handmade ideas on how the tape should look. So this is already how the sliding mechanism, but feel mm -hmm. this, this is cardboard, totally yeah, handmade. Yeah, it is. Because back then you didn't have a 3D printer, so he, mm -hmm. he stuck and glued everything together. And he also had in his basement um, things that didn't make it, like uh, the double, the double okay. pack that never made it for for if you would do a double album mm -hmm. on uh, DCC. So he um, he made that available to the uh, DCC museum. This is how the hats were produced. Mm -hmm. This is called a wafer. So all of them are hats, okay. and then they 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 cut, the, they cut them um, they cut them into pieces. Mm -hmm. and um, transported them in here. That is a um, DCC head transport. You see six heads of them in here. Mm -hmm. And then um, they got polished with this, uh, with this tape. And then in the end, they added a, um, a cable to it. And then you would have a... Uh, functioning. A, fu a, functioning uh, a functioning player, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and then um, something I think that will make you happy on a personal level. <laughs> because you don't know this yet, nobody knows this, we're releasing it this Friday. It's the new high fashion dance music by Ben Liebrand. I was about to ask you about that. Yeah. I, I saw the vinyl cover and it's, stuff. Uh, it's coming out this, uh, this, uh, this Friday, yeah. We, um, we did another album with, uh, with him and the high fashion and it's uh, the very first mixtape. Mm. So there's never been a continuous mixtape created on DCC. So this is the, um, uh, this is the first, uh, first one we just, uh, Got the first batch in, and uh, we're actually playing it. Okay. Uh, when uh, when uh, b before before you arrive, and then um, let me see. What is also new is um, a brand new display box. So out of the thirty-eight existing players, twenty-five of them we still have new in box. Whoa. And um, so. Um, what we're missing is then 13. We're also missing about 400 uh, tapes. So our, our, our job is not, uh, not done yet, but it's very nice um, to uh, occasionally find a player that has not been opened or um, uh, at least still in box. Yeah, just last week we found uh, the Victor in box again. You know, that, that these are the, the holy grails that, that you, after seven years of looking, bam, suddenly it is there and then, um, um, we try everything we can to um, to get it. And if people came to see the museum and say, okay, I want to try my, my own version of the VCM, not my own version, but I, I, I can, uh, if I want to try it for my own, is there any uh, way to buy um, uh, a player? Yeah. yeah. Tapes, stuff? Yeah. If we, um, we can go quickly into the office where we do the video production, and it's also um, our, st our store. So in here is now the office where we do all the video editing. You see here a uh, production table. We have five of those where we actually create the, um, the, the tapes. And then this basically is our store. This is all restored and, um, and ready for sale. Um, <laughs> Everything is DCC except for that uh, Technics yeah. player. That is a um, uh, actually an MP3 
uh, player with with a phone. So yeah, so people can have the, the yeah. modular. Yeah, we have portables, we have sets, we have separate players. Um, we import them from all over the world and then uh, restore them. Uh, what we can restore, we keep for parts. We take uh, we take apart um, uh, everything that we can uh, we can use. Yeah, so um, that uh, and most of these uh, things are uh, are on eBay. And this is our these are the releases of the museum. Yes. Yeah. This uh, these are the last uh, the last two ones, the award winning uh, Ben Ben uh, Liebrand, and uh, we won the uh, packaging award. And actually, this year we're entering with uh, the Johnny Gita Watson. Mm -hmm. We just entered. Uh, we will know in a month or so if we make it to the final with uh, and that has to do everything with aesthetics and design. Not okay. so much about the artist, but right. what, what can you do with the media? Uh, they have certain categories like CD, vinyl, and there's also a, a cassette. And we entered the, uh, the, uh, the cassette. So this is uh, also new. Now we have like a, a store. We can put everything on display after it's restored. Sometimes it's here for a week, sometimes it's here for a year. It depends on, um, on um, what people would, um, would yeah. like, right? Yeah, and then uh, I can show you our um, the work the work um, center or the service center. So in here is basically a wall of uh, shame. Uh, this is the, uh, <laughs> the the commemoration of the um, the Van Liebrand uh, iconic roof with mm -hmm. uh, with the disco, the very first um, 2017 with, with Jeremy that started it all. Um, uh, a mastering tape done by Ben Liebrand in the air tonight. It was part of a uh, charity auction. And this was uh, given to us last week. It's signed by Mick Fleetwood of Fleetwood Mac. Okay. Um, we uh, visited uh, the island of Maui and we tried to get it signed by, <laughs> by him. So he did. And this is the award we, um, we won last year for um, the best packaging award with the, um, with the, with, with the Ben Liebrand. And it's sort of like nice when you remember it from, from Redondo Beach that we now have all this, yeah. this, these walls and, and square footage to do that. Um, and this is um, the whole service area. So we have um, a more dedicated space that, that we, we can leave as is with, with all the equipment to make sure that everything is restored, all the spare parts um, nicely organized. So you know, if compare that to a garage yeah, that, yeah. We, that we had to that we had to work in. Yeah, you need to expand. Well, you get you get more and more spare parts, and you you you, you have to store them somewhere, right? Yeah. So now these is spare parts. Uh, how can people can get them? Um, well, we um, the spare parts that we don't have, we produce with molding or three D printing, and um, because the the process of of creating new parts with a niche mark of DCC is so complicated that you mm -hmm. really can do it and make it financially viable. So what we do is we, um, we sell uh, any part exclusively to, to Patreons. So what we like people to do is sign up as a Patreon um, and help us um, run the museum. And as a reward, you are the first one to be able to get the new DCC releases that we do but also to order any spare parts or blank tapes, stuff that we won't sell anywhere else, like on eBay. So um, everybody that needs parts first will become a Patreon. That, um, that is the, um, the idea behind it. Okay. Well, Ralph, uh, I'm gonna um, thank you very much for this sure uh, tour. And I'm sure people does not know about DCC and the museum and everything wonderful about DCC. So how can they uh, learn about the format, about the museum? How can they come to here? Please yes, tell us. Um, yeah, various options. Uh, of course, we are a cathedral city. The museum is free. If you let us know when you're coming, uh, we will be able to host you and give you a personalized tour, basically the same as you have gotten today. Uh, but we understand that, you know, most people are global, so they can't visit us. So what you have as an alternative is to go to dccmuseum.com and do a virtual tour there or go on YouTube and search for um, the channel Dr. DCC. And there are about 100 videos about 
what player you can get and how they function and if you have a problem what you can do to repair so everything is very well uh, documented so even if you can't come to california we have ways of getting you in touch with dcc awesome well now thank you very much again y bueno pues amigos ya lo saben este es el museo del dcc el nuevo museo del dcc Tenía que venir a darme una vuelta y bueno, pues ya lo saben. Compartan los videos, denle likes, eh, sus comentarios, todo ya se lo saben. Muy bien, yo soy Ricardo Méndez, nos vemos en la próxima aquí en Envinil Hi-Fi.